This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas, and I'm doing another beginner machine knitting video. And in this video, I'm planning to make a gauge swatch. And I begin with an e-wrap cast on in the main garment yarn. And while I'm wrapping, I'm going to talk a little about the gauge swatch. The purpose of the gauge swatch is so that you can measure the size of the knitting and you can make your garment fit. Another purpose of the gauge swatch is so you can test the yarn and see what kind of effect you're getting and see if you have a nice tension. Your gauge swatch should be made in whatever pattern stitch that you're knitting with. This is going to be a plain swatch. The gauge swatch should be laundered exactly the same way as you plan to launder the finished garment. And the gauge swatch should be big enough. You know, a lot of times hand knitters just knit a few inches. Sometimes they'll knit a four inch square to measure their gauge. And that's fine for hand knitters, but since we can machine knit so very quickly, it's nice to have a little bigger sample. Now, after I e wrap on, I'm just going to drop a comb on and a couple of weights because I want the stitches to form with the same stresses on them that the garment's going to have. And, of course, my garment's probably going to have three or four weights across. So my swatch needs to have weights at about the same intervals. And the beginning of the swatch is just a margin. The center of the swatch for a bulky machine will be 20 stitches by 30 rows. For a standard machine, it will be 40 stitches. This is a bulky machine, and let me start to, m to knit the margin on the swatch. When I say margin, I mean the area we're not going to measure, the outside, like the picture frame. Now, a very useful thing to do, so that if it's a t little bit of time going by between getting the gauge swatch done and actually knitting the garment, is to mark the swatch with the tension. So. One of the ways you can mark a swatch really easily is by making some little eyelid holes. And then you've got a permanent marking. And if it takes you six months to get that yarn knitted, whenever you get the yarn out and look at the swatch, you know exactly what tension that you used. And this is on tension three, so I'm putting three holes. If it were 3.1, I would go over a little space and put one more hole. But it's three even, so one, two, three holes. Knit another six rows. Now, I have a, another yarn of similar thickness that will also wash that I'm using for a marker. It has a good, strong contrast with the green, and it's purple yarn. And what I'm going to do is just knit two rows for stripes, and then cut the green yarn, cut the purple yarn. And I'm going to need a couple of pieces of purple yarn for making some markers here in a minute. So I'll cut those while I've got the purple yarn in my hand. And you will soon see how I use the markers. The fact is I want lots of places to measure my 20 stitch width. Now if this was standard, it would be a 40 stitch width. At this point, I begin the actual rows. I need to measure 30 rows, so row counter goes to zero. And I'm going to knit a few rows with my green yarn. I need to get a marker in. I put the marker, since I want 40 stitches measured out, I'm put it on needle 21 left. And I put a marker thread on needle 21 right. And I just leave that dangling because I'm going to use that marker thread again. And I go up a little more. Six more rows. And I'm going to use the marker thread and mark another stitch. I just knit it through. Now you could just hang it in the needle, but I like to knit it through. 
seems to stay for me a little bit better and it's also very easy to measure. Another marker on the right, needle 11 right. Obviously, if I were doing standard gauge and going 40 stitches wide, I'd use needle 21 left, needle 21 right, but it's, it's bulky, so it's 11 and 11. Another marker. This gives me four separate places that I can measure so I get my width right. I'm now on row 30. A bulky gauge um, tension swatch is 30 rows long, so it's time to stop and put in another marker so that I can measure my vertical height of the needle. So I've got a nice full row of this purple to use for measuring. And now I'm going to knit this green top margin so that I'm not measuring way out of the edges, I'm measuring in the middle of the knitting. At this point, I'm going to do the loop through a loop bind off so that I can finish it up and get it in front of the camera and you can see exactly how the finished gauge swatch ought to look. And to review, the loop through loop bind off is shown in one of their very early lessons and I just start binding off at the opposite edge from my cut yarn and I just pull a loop through a loop. Sometimes it takes me quite a few gauge swatches before I start knitting the garment. I might do the gauge swatch and feel it and say, oh, that's too thin and gauzy. Or maybe I wash it and I don't like the way it looks after it's washed. Some yarns really need to be knitted more tightly than makes common sense to me. For instance, chenille needs to be knitted rather tightly. So the gauge swatch is a great opportunity to see how the knitting is going to behave in the wash. And I get about that far and I realize that I have too much weight on the knitting. So I'm going to take off the weights. And in a minute I'm going to need to get the comb off too. Okay, pull that through and proceed. Time to get the comb off. Just gets to be too much weight hanging on just a few stitches that are left. One of the things that I always tell people is that I am not a particularly fast knitter, but I am a good knitter. So sometimes you see me fumbling about and say, wow, she's pretty clumsy. If she can do this, I could do this too. Let me move the needle out of the way and show how the finished swatch looks. Here it is. Let me uncurl it. This is the top of the swatch. And then here's the bottom of the swatch. I'm going to uncurl it some more get a little help from the gate pegs just so you can see it. Now after this were washed and blocked, that's when I would measure. I would measure in several places from the top of the purple to the bottom of the purple. So I'm just measuring the 60 rows of green stitches. Not too close to these markers because they do make it longer right there. And then maybe here and maybe here and maybe here. A whole bunch of measurements feel really confident about the height of the knitting and then I'll measure the width of the knitting here and I'll even measure in between and here and try it in several places and see exactly how wide it is. So that's how to make a gauge swatch. Remember the key things are
to process the gauge swatch the same way that you will the sweater, launder it, block it the same way. Also, if it has a pattern stitch, have the pattern stitch for the gauge swatch. Don't use a similar color. Don't use a similar yarn or the same yarn in another color. Use the exact yarn that the sweater is going to be made of.